And so I think too, that we're always trying to like offer people different solutions. Like this year, we really brought in some offerings of digital organization, which are doing yeah. really well for people. Well, I wasn't thinking about that two years ago. Like, hey, how can we organize in the digital space and still be making great money? So I think mm -hmm. it's always trying to evolve and us like help people as their businesses evolve and change. Our business looks very different today than it did seven years ago. It looks different than it did three years ago. And so I think mm -hmm. like offering a lot of options, a lot of education, a lot of just variety for people wanting to shape the business that they want, not making their business look like ours or anyone else's, but really it looking like what they want it to look like. Woo! What's up and welcome to the Speak Organize podcast. I'm your host, Melanie Summers, professional organizer, ADHD organizing specialist, and your go-to gal for all things pro organizing business. I like to speak organize to give you the tools to conquer your clutter, live life with more purpose, and learn all about the business of tidying. Do me a favor, if you haven't already, take out your device and tap that subscribe button so you become a member of the speaker fam. If you're watching today's episode on YouTube, you can tap that thumbs up as you get value out of today's episode. And don't forget to tap the notification bell so that you're notified whenever we post new content every single week. If you're an Apple podcast user, go ahead and leave us that rave five-star review so that we can reach more amazing folks just like you who are looking to live out their dreams and run that professional organizing business successfully. Lastly, if you have not joined my free Facebook group, that's a great place to get started and get those general questions answered. The group is growing in rapid numbers every day with tons of really generous, amazing folks just like you who are interested in learning more about organizing and running a successful organizing business. I'll make sure the link to that is down in the description of the video and the podcast show notes. As a reminder, the main mission here at I Speak Organize is to give you the best quality tools and resources to help you start or level up your organizing business and truly feel confident and successful to make six or seven figures without spending all of your time working on your business. So you can actually spend time with your family, work on your hobbies, you can travel, whatever it is. I am here to help provide those resources. And maybe you're telling yourself some story today, like I can't charge what that person charges, or I'm not good at marketing or whatever it happens to be. I am here to help you understand that you can be exceptional with the right tools and training. So in just a few minutes, I'm going to share with you the ways in which I can help you get over those hurdles and punch that imposter syndrome feeling in the face. But first, let's get into this awesome interview. All right, speaker fam, please join me in welcoming these two gorgeous women. I've got Brandy and Ryan from the home sort here, and they're going to school us up on the how to summit. I have been getting emails, text messages, phone calls, all these things. Ever since I went, they're like, Melanie, how was it? Tell me all the things. So I figured instead of trying to piece together some information, I thought, why not bring the source to the Speak Organized podcast. So ladies, welcome. Thank you for coming on the show today. Oh, Hello. thank you. Our thank pleasure. you for having us. Yeah, thank you. There may be kind of a weird like lag between, so we'll try not to talk on top of each other. I know you guys are used to that, but we'll do yeah. our best, right? We really are used yeah. to it. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah, I want to learn a little bit more about the background first of your business, because obviously you guys run a very successful home organizing company that serves clients all throughout California. And so I want to learn a little bit more about that and what led you to creating the How To Summit for Professional Organizers. Well, let's see, a couple, let's see, five or six years ago, we just, I had this idea that we had always worked for my mom's company and some things were changing in in. Her Ryan, business. I want to stop right there. Our business has started seven years ago. Well, great. Okay, seven years ago. Time flies. So you have fun, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Seven years. Who knew? Okay, seven years ago. Gosh, yeah, that does feel like now that you mention it, yeah, that makes more sense. I just had this idea. And it's funny because at first I had, you know, asked my cousin to be a part of it, but she couldn't because she was homeschooling her kids. And then Brandy was sitting there. It's like, I want to wait. I want to do organizing with you. And so we were kind of like naive enough to just jump in as far as, hey, we're going to start this business. It's going to be great. And then we quickly realized, oh, wait, this is not that we don't know what we're doing, but we need a lot of help. And so it's, it's a it's a two-parter. So the second part of that is we started reaching out to other organizers. And to be honest, we were met with like 
some people were really friendly, but the majority of the people, like we couldn't get answers from, from anyone about the business, which I understand now being in the business so long, <laughs> probably totally. asked them really bad questions. Like tell us everything about your business. We probably, we a hundred percent asked some dumb questions like that. And well, and we didn't realize it till like people would ask that of us. Hey, can you tell me how you started your business? It's like, no, I can't spend 10 hours to tell you the journey of how we got here. But yeah, right. no, you know, you're just, you don't even know what you're asking. Right. Yeah. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. You don't know. What you're, so anyways, but we're kind of like, this needs, usually there's a lot of resources in, you know, if you want to go into a field, there's a lot of resources. There just wasn't a lot of resources. And so we're like, again, just had this idea one day. I'm like, Brandy, let's start a conference. Like, let's like solve the problem of, you know, they're not being a community and they're not being like a hub where this is like, where everything goes down and you know, what's happening in the community if you're at this event. So Brandy and I quote said, sure, but nobody's going to (laughs) come. That's funny. Mostly, I, 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 I didn't say that. She, these are our brain reaction. Okay, but it's going to be unsuccessful. Okay, how much is it going to cost? Okay, <laughs> but Ryan is like warms up, you know, in another week to it. Ryan yeah. is like the creative ideas between the two of us. So she's like, "Let's do this," and I'm always like. Sure, we'll do it. It's probably not going to work and it's going to be a ton of money and we're going to fail at it, which is funny because I'm like very confident and oddly optimistic. But some Mm. Ryan has a lot of ideas. There's a lot of ideas that come from Ryan. And so, you know, sometimes I got to funnel through. Not all of them are gold nuggets, unfortunately. (laughs) Right. Well, that's not your job is to have the good ideas all the time, to have the ideas. And then Brandy can filter. Uh huh. And so, yeah, it's like, no. Brandy sells herself short. She's got a lot of great ideas too. And, and magically matches it with that amazing follow through and logistical brain of hers. So oh my goodness. Well, we just, Anyways, that's um, kind of how the business and the summit came about. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think good too, good team. like maybe just like a word of encouragement for someone as I think, but sometimes think people think every good idea is well thought out and well planned out. And I would say that has not been our journey. Sometimes we're just throwing things at the wall and seeing what sticks. And right. We've had some great things stick to the wall and we've had a lot of things just tumble right on down that we did not foresee coming. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, that was really Ryan's heart was, hey, let's do something and get people together and try and give people resources and let let people leave encouraged and connected. It really started out with like a simple heart and that heart hasn't changed. It's just, you Mm -hmm. know, through that, we went through COVID and then we went through, you know, the world is different. And so. But with that same vision, we just keep trying to build something to really help people and to make a difference for people in their business. Yeah, that's amazing. And and you guys have grown pretty significantly in terms of number and size with the summit. You've gotten a little bit more um, intricate with the different types of workshops that you're offering. We're going to get into all of that, of course. But I want to learn a little bit more about the meat inside of the summit. So that's a question I get fairly often is, you know, what am I going to get out of this if I come to the summit? So what are the most impactful sessions or workshops that attendees can look for in the upcoming summit? Because you guys have already announced 2025 is going to be in Dallas. That's already public knowledge. You guys are hitting the ground running, which is amazing. Even before we even left the summit this past fall, you guys were ready to go for next year, which is awesome. So Melody, we've never actually been able to do that before because... Uh You know, building an event, there's so many kind of like landmarks you have to get to. And we have really tried to do the summit on a shoestring budget because we tried to keep the cost really low so a lot of people can come. And so, you know, we finally this year were able to like have a venue in place, announce that. And so that was really fun too. And a lot of people, I think there's already like 140 people signed up that signed up like in the first two days when it was open. And so I know I was really, we were really excited about that. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I know you guys maybe don't have all of the pieces in place or can't share things yet because you're getting things in order, but what are some of the things that we can look forward to for next season? Yeah. Well, First of all, and I think this is important, and I I try and tell this to everybody, is you're going to get out of any conference what you put into it. So if you go in with a mindset of, okay, I'm going to be reminded, I'm going to be encouraged, I might learn something new, or I might 
just hear something that sparks, oh yeah, I got to be working on that. So any conference, because we could have, you know, the most amazing speaker up there. But if your mindset is that of, I'm going to be critical, my ears are going to be closed. I, oh, I already know this. There's, you know, you're, you won't learn anything. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's so important for any education experience, which that's what the summit is. It's part education, part community to go in and go, okay, I might hear something that I, that I already know, or I might hear something new and I'm going to, you know, take this down, process it and figure out what works for my business. But we do have some cool new things happening at the summit, but always at the summit, you're going to get kind of like the latest in the industry as far as where organizers are at. You know, we take like a sampling. We have individual organizers that do solo entrepreneurship. We have people that do teams. We always try and talk about financial stuff at some point. We we, we try and give like a sampling because there's a lot of, you know, people with different businesses in the industry. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think- um, you're always going to get amazing content. You're always going to get something to take away, especially if you come in with the attitude of I'm learning something, whether, you know, whether I've heard it or not, I'm learning something. Right. Um, What am I missing, Brandy? Well, I think too, you know, that we're realizing as time goes on, you know, this isn't like an industry that's like, I think a lot of people have been doing this work for a very long time, but I feel like with social media and just the aesthetic design of organizing and what people are wanting and Pinterest and all the things, you know, the, the industry is ever evolving. And so it's kind of like this information there, it's like the summit, it's not happening like this anywhere else. I know there are other conferences that may be a little bit like in the productivity space, but it's not like the summit. We've been to a few. This is just kind of very different on its own. And I think one thing that we've really realized is these businesses are hard. They're labor intense. You know, running teams is, is hard. It, it's a lot. You know, when you're you're shopping product, all these things, and I don't think there's been some like giant blueprint of someone who's been doing it like this for 30 years and this is the standard. Mm-hmm. And so I think too, that we're always trying to like, offer people different solutions. Like this year, we really brought in some offerings of digital organization, which are doing really well for people. Well, I wasn't thinking about that two years ago. Like, hey, how can we organize in the digital space and still be making great money? So I think Mm -hmm. it's always trying to evolve and us like help people as their businesses evolve and change. Our business looks very different today than it did seven years ago. It looks different than it did three years ago. And so I think like offering a lot of options, a lot of education, a lot of just variety for people wanting to shape the business that they want, not making their business look like ours or anyone else's, but really it looking like what they want it to look like. Yeah, I really appreciate what both of you said there because, and I want to point a few things out, Ryan, talking about how you have to have the right mindset going into a situation like that because it can become very quickly overwhelming when you start inevitably comparing your business to somebody else's. And then Brandy's pointing out, we're not here to make your business look like home sort. We're here to show you all the different possibilities that are in front of you, whether you have a digital business, you want to be a photo organizer, you want to have a team, you want to be a solopreneur, you want to be an author, whatever. We are here to give you like all the different options. And if you can just, for me, it was the moment of leaning into what makes me feel uncomfortable about this. Where is the where is the opportunity for me to grow? What what way, what path do I want to take? Like what seems cool? What seems like I could possibly go that direction? And that's where I really like for me wanted to lean into content creation and sharing messages and bringing people the information that they need to run high quality businesses just kind of in a different way. So that was a very valuable experience for me. Okay, pop quiz time. How would you feel six months from now if you were sitting in this exact same spot, sipping on your favorite beverage, running your own professional organizing business, and it was booked out with amazing clients that get you excited to get out of bed in the morning? How would that make you feel? But let me guess, there is something holding you back, right? Like that voice of imposter syndrome that whispers, who am I to do this? Well, let me tell you, I have been there and it is not only possible to overcome those fears, it's essential because your future clients need somebody exactly like you. And remember that I am here to help you with proven tools and strategies to get you where you wanna be in this industry if you're willing to follow my lead. My brand new mini course from Overlooked to Overbooked is designed to help you overcome your imposter syndrome, 
turn your website into a client magnet with SEO strategies that actually work, skyrocket your social media presence without that uncomfortable buy my stuff energy, and confidently network like a pro, all while building genuine connections that feel as natural as making friends. It's all self-paced and comes with a workbook full of done-for-you scripts and templates that are proven to generate leads, help you sound confident, and convert all of that into cash in your wallet. And if you want to get paying clients in the door faster, you can also pick up my done for you pro organizer forms pack designed specifically for professional organizers with nine custom templates, including a client agreement, payment authorization form, follow-up email scripts, and so much more. You use a free Canva account to add your business info, branding touches, and then you're basically ready to go for your next project. And as a special gift for being an amazing part of my speaker fam, you're going to get $8 off both the overbooked course and my Pro Organizer Forms Pack using code YTPRO8 at checkout. All that info will be down in the description and the podcast show notes. Lastly, if you're kind of nervous about taking payments for jobs and you know you need to take cards from clients, then I've got a tool that is going to make your day. Project to Payment is my favorite invoicing and customer management tool that's actually easy to use. With just one tool, you get paid faster, create seamless professional customer experiences, and you get access to estimates, invoices, payments. They've got super fast payout for a healthy cash flow, QuickBooks integration, and to top it all off, you get the best and friendliest US-based customer support to walk you through any hiccups or questions. And there's so many more features that they have coming online every single month. You work hard to organize for your clients, so doesn't your business deserve the same? Obviously the answer is yes. And so Project to Payment is only $20 a month and they have the most competitive and transparent processing fees in the industry. And trust me, I have tried them all. And if that weren't enough, when you go to projecttopayment.com slash I speak organized, you're going to get three months completely free just to try it out. So you're welcome. That's it. No more reinventing the wheel. These resources are plug and play and allow you to access what works while avoiding the pitfalls as much as possible. Remember that investing in yourself is the first step to showing your clients that they should invest in you. So don't let another moment pass you by to become the business owner that your future clients need. You're only one decision away from becoming booked, busy, and well-equipped to crush it in the professional organizing industry. So kind of moving forward in that sort of connection and collaboration aspect, I know that's something that's extremely important to you guys because you have business owners that run teams, you have solopreneurs, everybody's in a different place, like you said, Brandy. So how does the summit facilitate connections and collaborations among attendees? There is a group. I know there's numerous groups like this, but there are four ladies, Susie Salinas. She was a speaker, Tracy Bowers, Liz Wan, who spoke and Jen Johnson. And they met at the summit maybe three or four years ago. I don't, I don't remember which summit they met at, but they met and they created like a little mastermind amongst the four of them. They meet once a month, they Zoom call, they text all the time, they communicate all the time. And they, all four of them say that the summit changed their business because of the relationships they made. These are like their go-to people when they have a difficult client, when they don't know what to do about a situation, they just go to this little group and I can name 10 other groups that at least that have that from the summit. And so I think those are like the unexpected gifts that you don't always even realize that you may get is these, you know, these group of people to go to these, these girlfriends, you know, per se, these business colleagues that really like support you and spur you on and help with your new ideas. And Hey, this makes sense. Have you thought about this? And so I think that happens a lot at the summit. And I think that is like, there is value in that, that you can't even quantify. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. What do you think, Ryan? Well, the summit is the culture of the summit is it's a party. It's, it's the, the smartest party around because you're learning a bunch, but also the vibe is, is on point. It's like warm. It's welcoming. It is not stuffy. It is not quiet. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and so, cause we've gone to conferences before and you're like, Hey, can you pass me the pencil? You feel like you have to whisper and that's just not, that's not our vibe. And so I feel like we're creating, or we're trying to create a culture where people it is easy to interact. You know, obviously we can't make someone, you know, we're not a dating service. We can't, you know, connect people that way, but we do the best we can to make an environment warm and friendly and foster friendship. And because relationship is everything in business, right? 
Mm-hmm. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And so yeah. um, we, uh, next year, who next year there is going to be more networking opportunities, more, I don't want to say social time. What's another word for networking? But it, there is going to be a more time built in for community and connection like that because yeah. the, the people want it, the people love it, and we're going to give it to them. So it, and it kind of harkens back to that. It is, you get out what you put into it. So if you're like, Hey, I need to go find my community. Trust me, you will find them at the site. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If that is your goal. Great. Show up because here's your community and the people are ready to be in community with you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's really well said. And I, I agree with you that the networking piece is so important because a lot of people coming to the summit that I spoke to and a lot of people that follow my work are solopreneurs. And so they feel very alone yeah. in this journey. And if you just, if you go in with the right mindset and you go find your people and then you go find others who are in places that are aspirational for you and you can learn from them, ask them questions, sit down at the table with your little fan because it's September in Texas and it was hot as ever. Oh my goodness. But it was great. I loved it. But if you can just have that time to really connect with those people and then foster those relationships outside of that, it doesn't feel so lonely anymore. And it's it's funny to me having interviewed so many people on the show and getting to finally meet them in person or making friends on social media, finally meeting them in person. It just is like the little cherry on top, that bow on top of the present. Totally. Like you've known forever. Yeah. And speaking of the heat, just a little sneak peek. The venue is huge. The venue is huge. So we are really, I I know us like wimps over here in California and apparently in Washington. It's like, I I can't take this humidity. Anyway, so we're, I can't promise everything's going to be indoors, but that's really one of our goals because the venue is, it's huge. It's gorgeous. That's awesome. We got to lean into the discomfort. Like I said, you know, like if you want to get something good out of it, you got to lean into it. And I actually am from the South originally as well. I didn't know you gals were Texas ladies. I'm from Tennessee originally. So I feel like I should have been more prepared for that moment, but I was not. And you know, it just, it is what totally. it is. You got the sweat dripping down the back of your dress and whatever, but well, and this still how, look fabulous. This is how I am too. But then I go inside and I'm freezing. <laughs> they put off the air. I'm like, could we? Leave? Yeah. You guys yeah. were passing out blankets. That was hilarious. I was like, who is cold? Who is the person that is cold? I know. It is really funny. Yeah. I think it was interesting because I went through and I sat in all the workshops and I was in Lisa Trigstead's workshop and she was walking someone through like a consultation process. Now to mm-hmm. me, where we're at in our business, that would be something I don't need help with. I would think I would have the mindset of there's nothing more for me to really learn about that because we kind of have it dialed in how we do it. But she was walking through someone through this process and even listening to that, I was like, oh my word. She just said like three things that are such great tips that like, I could take away. And so I think like if you have like a mind to learn and like an open heart to learn, you can learn anything from anyone. Even if it's you're like, oh, I definitely don't want to do that. That's still learning. That's a takeaway, you know, but I was like, here I am in this workshop and she's talking about consultations. And I just took away like three things that I would not have even expected to learn about that subject matter. And it was awesome. And I was excited about it because here I am seven years in and she was talking to someone, you know, six months in and it's like, there's still takeaways at any time. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out. And that's kind of leads into my next question about how you feel that the summit helps people elevate their business practices. So you, you did just give us a great tangible takeaway there of just attend the workshop, even if you feel like it might not be for you, knowing that something doesn't work for you is just as valuable as what does. And then reframing your mindset around, oh, I haven't thought about presenting it that way. So what are some other things that you feel like can help, like these workshops can help with our attendees in terms of elevating their business? I just think every workshop, we were really, really, it really mattered to us this year that every single speaker, workshop, main stage, no matter what, when someone was presenting, that people had logistical takeaways that they could go and implement into their business. So when Corinne Moore hands up there and literally talking about your finances and like, these are percentages. These are, you know, you should be making, if you're charging this, you know, if you're paying someone this, you should be charging the client three times that numbers like that are just 
maybe no one's ever said that to someone. That is like game changing. All of a sudden someone gives you a whole packet and really gives you financial information to break down the things that you can apply to your business. Melissa Klug was on the stage and she was talking about things that a lot of times we don't even think about, different things with Google and some of these other things that are on the internet and ways that we can grow our business and get our um, our business out there that aren't necessarily social media. I feel like mm-hmm. every single speaker just gave away such nuggets. I sat in Jen Roban's workshop and talking about team training and things that she did. And I'm like, these are nuggets. You put all these things together and these are life-changing for a business. You know, Susie Salinas with her systems. Oh my gosh. Every time Ryan and I talk to her, I'm like, wow, she's like a genius giving ideas. I love and, her. Yeah. She's, she's my spirit she's animal. Awesome. She is. She, and she's just so smart and she's just thought through hard things. And so it really is. I feel like no matter what the subject matter was, everyone gave like such valuable information. Shira Gill everybody loves Shira. She could talk about the same thing for 10 years in a row and it doesn't matter. She's the most requested and everyone loves her because she takes practical tips of like, this is what I did. I had no work and I was trying to start my business and this is what I did. I took these 30 pictures and just gives advice to whoever you are and where you're at. And so I really think, I do not know how it could be possible that anyone could come and say they didn't learn anything. I'm not saying anyone did say that, but every single person gave such concrete information that you could tweak. You don't have to do it their exact way, but that you could take bits and pieces of what they're offering and go, oh yeah, Tuesday I could implement that and that's going to elevate what I'm doing. And some Mm -hmm. of this information, it would cost you thousands in a coaching program to give away these things. Yeah. These people have, have people are charging thousands upon thousands yeah. for coaching programs. Some of those price tags, I'm like, wow. Um, which, Hey, I'm going to digress off of this. Subject. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, yeah, I think too. there, uh, to me, there was just so much that you could take in any subject matter, every single presenter, even as someone sits up there and says, these are four things I've done. And I wish I wouldn't have done. That wasn't like my smartest decision. You just shortcutted someone to going through those same pitfalls, you right. know? So And I think, you know, Melanie, like you were saying, I mean, two years ago at the summit, Ryan and I left and it was really funny because I was like, man, we should be doing this. We should be doing this. We're not doing this. We should be doing this, blah, blah, blah. And I think that sometimes if you're not careful that you can get into the comparison game when you listen to speakers and listen to people's successes and Mm -hmm. that that's like even a pitfall that you can go into. But I think it's so important to just take what people are offering and apply it to your business and let that elevate what you're doing. It doesn't have to look like them. And and we all have hard days. We all have, we've got a million failures. Ryan and I have a lot of successes, but trust me, we've got probably double the failures. And so we just get ourselves up and dust ourselves up, you know, off and keep going. Right. Yeah. Well said. I'm curious too about if you have spoken to anybody, any of your friends or attendees that feel as though they had that light bulb moment or that transformation moment in their business where they were like, had I not come to the summit, I wouldn't be where I am. Do you have a specific example of somebody or a circumstance where that has happened? Yeah. I mean, Susie Salinas always comes to mind because she sends us multiple emails or when we talk to her about things every single time as well. I I know this because of the summit. I know the summit has changed my business. Oh, yes. We have so so many people. Gosh, I'm terrible with names. I took this medicine when I was younger and it honestly has affected my memory. (laughs) And so I'm terrible with names, but so many people that that is the thing of like, I got in community or I learned this one thing to say, you know, we did some not coaching, but we we have had some mentors and one mentor told me this kind of like one phrase to say when I was doing a consultation. And after I started saying that one phrase, I started like booking everyone. It was just a series of words. Like it was not, it was not, they could have told me that in five seconds, but that five seconds made me made money on money on money. And so and and that's just what I applied. So when you come to the summit, there's so many of those five second nuggets that are like, if I just do this one thing, you know, yeah. we, we do tell people that if you leave with one idea that makes you some money, great. Mm-hmm. Well spent time. Right. Yeah. Paid for the cost of your ticket. Yeah. Well, whether you heard a bunch of 
you know, or, or not. Yeah. I think the win for everyone looks different. We do hear that, Melanie. We get a ton of testimonies of, and even on surveys, like, thank you, thank you, thank you for this. Like, and I think what everyone takes away is so different based on what they need. And I think that is the magic that we're trying to create at this event, that no matter who you are, no matter where you're at in the journey of your business, we're really trying to give something that everyone, that, that applies to everyone. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. our needs and our wins and our takeaways are different, but we do hear it a ton. And you're right. Whether it's community, whether it's, I made this friend, whether it's like, oh my gosh, I didn't, I've been so confused about what to charge. Like, you know, some of those simple things that actually really matter, what you're charging people really matters. And they come and they sat through a, you know, a workshop and someone just broke it down for them and gave them a handout. And it's like, take this home, you know, run these numbers kind of a thing. And so I think no matter what it is, we hear it all the time Mm -hmm. about just different things. And that is, that's great because that's what we want for people. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to embarrass you guys a little bit because I, it's, it's very clear the heart and the passion that you have behind your mission with the how-to summit. And it was reflected in so many different ways, like in the smallest little details, you guys had these amazing swag bags that you gave us that weighed like 20 pounds. We picked them up and I was like, the paper bag was going to break. And so we were going through all the stuff and Melody, I want you to know the weight of the swag bags was also shocked to us on uh, Thursday when we got there. You're like, uh-oh. well, it's because you're just being so generous. And it was it was funny too, because one of the things that I pulled out was one of my favorites. And I'm gonna let Ryan talk a little bit about yeah. it too, because it was Magic Mind. Yes, so and good. they are one of my absolute favorite companies. Ryan and I, I realize we don't we both don't drink coffee. This is kind of our go-to. Yeah. And honestly, the jet lag situation experienced oh with traveling, yeah. this stuff is amazing. And you guys had it in your bag. Yes. We got introduced to Magic Mind through the summit. They are amazing. I am a hardcore fan now because yeah. I'm not a beverage person. And so I get so jealous of all these people drinking coffee. Get They're getting their stimulation in the morning. They're getting something. Well, I need something too. And I'm not a tea drinker. And so this is like such a great combination because it's it's like a, it's a juice and it's sweet. Right. But also you can take it quickly as a, as a shot. Yeah. And so. And it gives you, it doesn't make you jittery. It doesn't, the side effects are all good. You kind of like feel nothing yet feel a lot. I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's true. It's it's because it's really well balanced. It's got L-theanine yeah. in it, nootropics, adaptogens, um, all of these things that are really, really good, like as like a whole food yeah. basis. Yeah. And look how tiny, like if you guys the, can see. The mushrooms, it's got the mushrooms, the hot mushrooms in it. Yes. Yeah. Melanie, all the girls when we're at the summit, because we had never had Magic Mind before. And so what the reason that Ryan drank it is all the young girls that were part of our team that came, they were like, have you guys tried this? They were like all freaking out because they were like, this stuff is, yeah, they kind of described it like Ryan did. They're like, it doesn't make you jittery. And yet it like, like, come alive. I wasn't a part of that conversation, Brady. That's not why I drank it. Well, that's what, oh, I thought, oh, then I guess you, oh yeah, you weren't in the room with us. All the girls were talking about it. I did. I thought that's why uh, you tried it. I just, I was like the, the jet lag. I'm with you. We work really long nights and really early mornings. I'm like, all right, I'm going to give this a go. And so I put some in my refrigerator in the hotel, which is wonderful to have chilled everybody. Yeah. It's the best chilled for sure. It's the best chilled. And so my husband and I were like, Let's try this magic mind. And it was a very pleasant surprise. But yeah. I wish I would have been a part of that conversation. That sounds great. I would have tried it sooner. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. I mean, they've been sponsors of our channel for years. They, they're they very near and dear to my heart. And so we just have magic mind coming in the house. My husband loves it and yeah. it definitely helps me out. So just to make sure we get all of that information in, since obviously all three of us love it. Yeah. If you guys listening, watching today are interested in trying it out, of course, your girl here has a discount for you. You have a Ooh. limited time offer, so you can get 48% off your first subscription or 20% off your first purchase with the code SPEAKORGANIZE20 at checkout. So write that down, everybody. Yeah. Check it out. I'm actually writing it down right now. <laughs> my husband, I get so mad because he's like, I drink my coffee and then I drink one of these every day. I was like, babe, you drink one every day? 
<laughs> every day yeah yes. it, it really is the magic bullet especially when it yeah. comes to jet lag so that'll be down in the description of the youtube video on the podcast show notes you can head to magicmind.com slash i speak organized so yes speaking of all these wonderful things my friends let's let's continue on talk a little bit more about the summit. I want to move into talking about trends and innovations. So yeah. you did touch on this a little bit, how the industry is always changing. What are what do you guys feel like are some of the most important aspects for professionals to be aware of right now? Maybe some things we can look forward to learning about. Yeah, I think in our industry, there's a couple like, I don't want to say trends because I, they're just things we're becoming aware of. And one thing that we heard a lot about at the summit that we're going to be kind of touching on in some capacity at the next summit is the neurodivergent mm -hmm. um, people, you know, organizing for people that have ADD or ADHD or, you know, some, I don't want to say mental health because those aren't necessarily mental health issues, but you can get into the mental health issues of why people keep and hoard. And so we're going to, we're going to touch on that a little bit. I had never heard the term neurodivergent until this last yeah. summit. I was like, you mean the books divergent? <laughs> and I'm like, wait, Theo James? Yeah, we know about that. Yeah, 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 we know about the books from you know 10, 15 years ago. Um, now they're talking about something else. And so then again, just at the summit, you're in the community, you're hearing things. So that's like, oh wait, this is like a this is a thing. Yeah. And so we're gonna touch on that at the next summit. Another thing that has been huge in our own business, and we're seeing a lot of people have great success, is moving relocations. You know, some people call them luxury relocations or bespoke or concierge moves. That is a huge moneymaker in the industry and also an area that I think people are like, there's a lot to learn about it. Oh yeah. So we will also touch more on that at the next summit. What else, Bram? Oh, digital organizing. Too. That's what I think. I think digital organization comes, we were saying earlier, I think this business is very laborsome. And I think for some like solopreneurs that don't really want to build a team and they're doing some of this right. really physical work by themselves day in and out, I think that some people would like an option to just expand their offerings. There's digital organizers we know, they never have to leave the house and they're making really good money. And so I think just the digital yeah. age of the world that we're living in, I think it's a huge offering. And really until this year, I have not heard a ton of people talking about it in the network of people that we know. I think there's a strong network of it outside that that's kind of their main thing. But I think really making this an offering professional organizers is huge. And something else I've heard of some businesses doing, which I think is really, really cool, is offering almost like personal assistant type yeah. offerings to people. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's way to describe it. But I know a couple people, Judy Beltres does at her company in Austin's incredible. Heather Bifolko, she's out of Idaho. I know. Mm -hmm. I am. Yeah, she's Idaho. They're both offering it. And I've heard a couple other people doing it. And I'm like, oh, this is just kind of this holistic approach to helping people get their lives dialed in and organized and helping people live the life they want to live. And so I think that that can just like look out of the box. Some of the services that we offer, we only started offering them because there was demand for it. It wasn't like, Nope, we will organize pantries and there is nothing else we will do. And so I think it's like expanding what we're willing to do for clients and people and what is really successful. And at the same time, expanding yet streamlining. You know, Ryan and I always say like, we kind of know what we're good at and we know where our business makes the most money. And so we really dial into those things. So yeah, that's yeah. what I, I think. But I think it's an important, what gives people, you know, confidence and power and strength is those are options. So we try and present as many options Options as we can. We're not saying take every one of them, but we're showing you what you can do because this business isn't just about making pantries beautiful. Like Brandy said, this is a real business. And so some people need to diversify their offerings and some people need to streamline them in and go, I offer too much, or actually I want to go into the digital space and not do any more in person. Or And so th the summit is all about giving like an umbrella view of what's happening in the industry right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those are a couple great. of the new things that we will be talking about and unpacking more in the next summit. That makes me very happy. You must have talked to my friend, Lisa Fosniot, who's also in the Pacific Northwest. And she and I both specialize in organization for neurodivergent people. I am an ADHD organization really? specialist. Oh, yeah. And it's something that I speak about 
all like, over the place because not very many people understand ADHD organizing strategies because they're vastly different from how you would organize for a neurotypical person. So it's something that, sister, you can't get me to shut up about it. It's really intense. Great. Um, Yeah. This was just a a kismet moment. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. 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 I think Um, think it was like a couple of years ago, if you guys are familiar with ASPO, it's a, a relatively new, it's kind of like NAPO or ICD. It's a membership community, the American Society of Professional Organizers. I joined them in Orlando a couple of years ago to talk about that. And we just, it was like such a fun time. Um, so you definitely should look them up because they're they're awesome. And Early, when you're saying this right now, I've never even heard about this. I'm writing it down. Write it down. Yeah, this is see, okay. this is why I love doing this because we get to just help each other out and and inform and yes. educate. I particularly this past year at How to Summit loved the photo organizing that you guys brought in. Yeah. Um, Darla is like my new best friend. She's amazing. I'm going to have her on the show in a couple of months. And I have really enjoyed learning about photo and, and digital photo organizing in particular, yeah. like memorabilia. I'm just never would have known. And people are making money at it. <laughs> That's so much. That this is not a hobby. This is people's full yeah. time job and I yeah. think about myself who I am a minimalist I am extremely organized and I have not digitized all my photos mm-hmm. they're organized but I have not done that work and I need to do it I have an organized brandy all the time on our phones we're like hey do you know where that picture is and again we are the most organized and that is an area I could do it I just haven't done it yet right so, and yeah. you have the time like exactly. now Nobody got time for that except for the photo organizers. So hire one. And yet yeah. it's and yet it's so important. It's like these are like the memories of our lives. Mm-hmm. You know? I know, right? Yeah, I had a gal who runs Picturely in LA come on the show a couple months ago, and she's Iranian, and she said that during the revolution when she had to flee the country, the only thing she took with her was her photos. So that was like all she had when she came to the United States. And that's why she started the business to help people with digitizing their memorabilia. I mean, she just absolutely amazing woman. Her name is Hale and she's in the LA area. So if you're ever looking for somebody that can do that for your clients, you should hit her up. She's awesome. Wow. Uh, and, and really knows what she's doing. She does a lot yeah. of the physical like slides and reels and pictures and things, but she also works a little bit in the digital space as well, which is its own beast. It's crazy. I really like that because yeah. I'm a tech nerd. Yeah. So, you know, great. Yeah. Look at all the things you guys have going on. So but just like this, you just know different people than we know. And so this is like the, some of the magic of these relationships. You get to the summit and you know, so and so, and it it just it just your worlds, everyone's worlds start to come together, and you're just, you know, people that you never knew. We met a gal at the summit two years ago, and she works with us a lot for our, in our Southern California branch. And we were like needed someone last minute, and I'm like, oh, oh, I remember so and so. We met at the summit. I'm gonna send her a message mm-hmm. out of nowhere. It's just hilarious that like we it's would awesome. even be doing that. And now she's like such a huge resource to us, works with us. We talk business stuff all the time. And it's, it's like those moments, like in connections work for us too. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, this is just for everyone else. Like we're running the event and I'm literally networking and creating relationships that make our business yeah. lives a million times easier. And just, I mean, Melanie, I've been like writing down things you're saying on this call because I'm like, oh, I've never heard of this before. I've never heard of this person. I I literally hadn't heard the word neurodivergent until someone wrote it on a, until someone wrote it on one of the surveys. And Ryan's like, do you know oh, what this that is? That's crazy. crazy. It's really interesting because three of Brandy's kids have, wait, two, two, three of your kids have it. Your husband, my husband has ADD. Good Lord. We need to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I know. have it too, which is why I specialize in it. And that's the reason why my, the clients that I work with, that our company works with my project manager, her daughter has struggles with it and, and certain forms of OCD and things. And so we're able to tailor all of our organizing systems and strategies So that they're not like having to divert their focus six times to like stay on task. And it's just like so mentally overwhelming. So we're setting up a lot of like very not cool, like not beautiful, aesthetically pleasing systems, but like really cool, innovative systems, ripping closet doors up. I could go on and on. We're not going to talk about it right now because that's a whole other episode. Wow. 
Save it I know. I it. told yeah. my, one of my kids that does not have ADD, he is off at school. And sometimes I'll text him and be like, you left me here with everyone who can't, <laughs> focus and who can't accomplish anything. Come back and help me. And he is living life. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah. be a mom. I yeah. love that. That's so funny. Oh man, I've, you guys, I could just, I'm sure we could sit and talk about all of these things for hours and hours. Hopefully we've done our job here today to make everybody understand how amazing the opportunity is to get together and connect at a place like the How-To Summit. So I want to finish up just by getting a couple of pieces of information so that everybody who is, who, if you're not taking notes, fam, speaker fam, I'm talking to you you're not taking notes, please go back and listen and watch this again and take some notes for us so you make sure that you can get connected with these two lovely ladies. But before that, I always have my fun random question. It's sort of my my cap nod to James Lipton. If you were to be able to organize the personal workspace of any historical figure, who would it be and why? Oh, you know what? No, go ahead, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say probably Jesus because he'd be really nice if we got something wrong or <laughs> or I feel like we could just parlay that into like a, just a good talk. He'd probably encounter yeah. us a lot. Yeah, he doesn't really have a workspace per se, so you'd be traveling with him, but you know, <laughs> keeping, it, keeping him really organized. We could organize his carpenter tools, his pre, <laughs> his, yeah. his work job. His, his pre-mission job. Yeah. I love I that. I love I, that. I think my person would be someone like Jesus or someone from the Bible because those are, that's, yeah, gosh, I, you know, what's funny is I've read this question. Preachy. Uh, <laughs> I said preachy. I'm here for it. I'm yeah. here for it. I, I like I Jesus. Know. I want to talk to him. Gosh, we're just so not, my dad is actually a history, was a history teacher. So he's probably like, who would I, I don't you have know. to pick somebody, you have to pick somebody who is like, you know, maybe on the spectrum, like Albert Einstein, somebody who like has messes in piles and like try to streamline their life a little bit more or something. We, I don't we would know. Have that them, and then there would have been no light bulb. We would have thrown away the paperwork. We'd been like, that's it. This is too messy. We got to get, we got to purge here. And then there would be, you know, there'd be no car. There'd be no telling. That's the that like doesn't Martin, call you back. Martin Luther King Jr. would be great. Could just, but but that's more for me because I want to be inspired or I want to like you know get some of that magic. That wouldn't be for organizing. I actually I mean, don't think that's organizing people. I just want to talk to them. Exactly. I'm like no way in. Doing this? Yeah, that's why I do what I do because I love talking about <laughs> organizing. I'm what we call an enthusiast, and I hire a team who's really good at it to do it for me. And I say, here's how you do it have fun that's the best yeah is there like a like a great general or or military leader that we could like organize for that would help us with strategies i don't know i i don't know who knows bottom yeah. line for you ryan i think is it needs to be mutually beneficial in order for yeah, yeah. which is totally <laughs> valid this totally is a collaboration valid. okay <laughs> yeah which is what we're all about here with the how-to summit so yeah now just to kind of to kind of wrap up that last little bit here. I'm sure you guys, I've, I've seen you speak about branding before, and I know that vision boarding and goal setting are very near and dear to your heart. I know you're both very good at that. I know, Brandy, that's like definitely your wheelhouse. So <laughs> what is your long-term goal for the How To Summit and how do you see it evolving over the next few years? And how do we get on board with this? I think our goal is just to continue to grow the community. We want the summit to be like the Super Bowl of organizing. If you are in the community, this is where you go. This is where things are happening. This is like the event to be at. And we don't want that for our own sake and our own egos or anything like that. We really want it so people can come and they can be encouraged. I I can tell you five people this last summit that said to me, I had already bought my ticket, so I came, but I'm just ready to kind of throw on the towel because this is hard. And they came to me even like a little emotional, like, thank you. I'm encouraged to like keep going, you know, and to build something and to create something that blesses my family. And so, you know, I can pick up my kids from school or whatever anyone's whys are. We want to create a space that people feel like all those things, heart, mind, soul, all the things, the, the the connection. And so to just continue to grow something and to make something big, but it also feels small. 
You know, mm-hmm. I, we don't want people to feel lost in a sea of people. We want people to come and go, hey, there may be 600 people here, but I've got my 10 and I'm connecting and I'm, you know, the world is really big and there's a plenty of work to go around for everybody. There is, it doesn't have to be competition. It really can be like championing other businesses, other women. And that's what we really want. And I guess I can say men now because a couple of men came last year. We we can't yeah. now call everybody ladies. That's what we really want. And so we are like, our foots are not coming off the gas anytime soon. And we are full steam ahead. And we want it. This is an event for everybody coming. It's not an event for Ryan and I. It is an event for everyone else. So yeah, beautiful. We just want to shine a spotlight on the community. We want the community to grow. We want this to be opportunities for, you know, I I don't want to exclude the men, but I don't know. They've they've had their time. This really is like, we really want this to be something for women in business, something that can make people successful and we can, you know, provide education so people can have profitable businesses. We're, you know realistic goals. We're growing numbers. We're growing, you know, the venue this year is going to be huge and like no other, you know, we have been lucky enough to have been given a venue every year. Mm -hmm. And this year, because we've grown so much, we are, um, you know, it's our first like real venue. That's like that we're paying for. (laughs) That's amazing. Yeah. (laughs) So that's exciting. But this community or this industry while it feels really big is still very small Mm -hmm. and so we want to grow the industry and help people grow their businesses and grow the conference yeah first of all you know what's that when the tide rises we all or you know we all rise rise, we say it yeah yep yeah well however we say it i always say all ships rise when you work together or something like that you know yeah Yeah. which is true which is true it's always mutually beneficial and i just want to say you know having followed you guys for years and seeing how you've grown the summit i'm just so proud of you and all of the things that you've been able to accomplish and bring people together it's just so beautiful to see that evolution and just it's it really is amazing what you guys have managed to pull together for everybody. So on behalf of myself and my whole community, thank you for doing that and just being a just gracious resource. You're just so generous. And so we really appreciate that. Well, and I'll I'll let everybody know if you think you see a flaw with a summit, trust me, Brandy and I see it. We are the most critical and hard people on ourselves. So if you're like, we're not perfect and we see every flaw and we we work so hard to fix them to make this the best experience for the attendees. And also, I am very pro man. Okay, I don't want to like come on. <laughs> um, so that goes uh, a little bit. No, I I'm with you though. You know, we need our be, moment. But it is our heart to make it the the best conference yeah. for the organizing community. And the Super Bowl of organizing conferences. I love it. That's probably going to be the title of t- of today's episode. Just so, Brandy, you, you did half the work for me today. Hopefully yeah. it's SEO friendly. All right, fam, as always, that's going to wrap it up. And I just want to thank you for spending a little bit of time with us today in the Speak Organize podcast. And a huge shout out to Brandy and Ryan for taking time out of their busy schedules to share the heart and mission behind the How To Summit. Hopefully it answers a lot of your questions that you've been coming at me with. Maybe it gives you a better feel for what to expect and hopefully encourages you to take the dive and go to a conference to network and meet other folks in the industry. It really can be super life-changing and the How To Summit is a great option for you to consider. Make sure that you go down to the description of the video in the podcast show notes so you can check out all of the goodies we have down there. Get on my one-on-one calendar for a coaching call. Check out Overlook to Overbooked if you're having trouble filling your calendar or learning how to get clients or higher quality clients. That is the course for you to take. So don't skip out on that information. Join the free Facebook group. Head to ispeakorganized.com slash courses. That's going to be the easiest way to come across all of the different resources and tools and courses that we have available at the moment to find the thing that's going to work best for you. And then there's also information about how to get on the email list to learn more about the How To Summit. I'll make sure that's included down below as well. And of course, I would be remiss if I forgot to give a huge shout out again to Magic Mind for sponsoring today's episode. Remember, if you go to magicmind.com/slash I Speak 
Synchronize, you get that discount whether you wanna start a subscription for 48% off or 20% off your first order. Use the code SPEAKORGANIZE20 down at the link in the description to check them out. They're awesome. And beyond that, I hope you guys have a fabulous day and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.